Okay, so what we're going to do is take a look at creating a game manager. Now, you can think of the game manager as sort of the um, glue or the really a manager. It manages all the functionality of the game, the UI, all this other stuff, when the game starts and ends, when to call certain screens. Uh, so let's go ahead and do our scripts folder and right-click and create another C-sharp script here. And we're just going to name this game manager. Now, notice what happens here when I press Enter. It, um, let's let it reload for a second. The icon changed, and that's because Unity knows that this is such an important script. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, it, it's managing all the different components that it actually gives it its own special icon. Now, what I generally do is inside the scene is I'll create a empty game object, and I'll also name this game manager here, and I'll just attach the script to it. Let's go ahead and open up this script inside of Writer. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start with creating two Unity events. Um, one's going to be called on game start, and the other is going to be called on game end. Now, the reason we use events is it makes your code cleaner and more maintainable. And essentially, you could think of events as a way to like have your game essentially listen to certain events, like a, an event could be a score change or whatever, and then your game will react accordingly. And as we go through this, and we finish coding this out, you'll be able to see a little bit why we would use events. And it's part of this, um, this approach called loose coupling. So we're going to be talking a lot of design patterns and how they affect user experience. So let me go ahead and type out those two events. And what we'll need at the top here is a, uh, we'll be including a special class and it's called the events here. So we'll be using that there and it's grayed out because we don't have it used yet. But let me go ahead and pause the video and just type out the two on game start and end event. Notice that the property type is unity event here and that's what donates it a, a unity event. Now let's create a Unity event called onscores change or onscore change, and it's going to score store essentially two different values, um, and those are going to be our first player score and our second player score. All right, so this onscore change event, as mentioned, is going to store the score for player one and player two, and then we have this other Unity event in, which stores the type string. And if you remember before, string is just a series of letters, and this is going to be used to announce who the play, winner of the game is. All right, so let's create two generic regular old variables that are of type int that are used to store the score of player one and player two. Now before, what we did is to start our game is we have it called when you click the button. What I'd like to do is use some of these um, events that I've been talking about earlier. So for example, let's create a, a method and we'll call this start game. And what it'll be used for is resetting the scores as well as starting our game. And we'll be using the event system to listen so that when the game starts, uh, all listeners will know that the game has started. Okay, so I made a very simple function called start game. This is where we're talking about on game start invoke. Now remember we made this up here and all this is doing is this is letting by putting this keyword invoke here, it's letting all listeners in the game know that the game has started. So the event system essentially is a way of communicating across all these different scripts. Now, we haven't created the reset score. I'll create that in a second. But this is really just going to be used, again, to resort scores and to set the initial state. Remember, our game manager is controlling the overall flow of our game. All right, so I changed this to reset scores. But here's our reset scores method. It's pretty self-explanatory. We're just setting both scores to zero at the start of the game, and this is our start game. Now we need to call this start game function here. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm just going to paste it inside a start. So we could see sort of this um, sequence of actions happening. This is automatically called by Unity. It's going to call our start game method here, which is going to reset our scores to zero, and then it's going to it's going to let everyone know that our game has started. It's invoked our game start. So you can't have a start game without an end game. So let's go ahead and type out that method. OK, so here we have our end game method, which isn't being called. And we know that because it's gray here. Now, what's happening here is we had just reached the end of our game. 
So we're going to invoke the on game end invoke, which again notifies all listeners that the game has ended. And then we want to notify the listeners that remember we have a, a value up here, a parameter that's a string called winning player. So we'll pass in player one one or player two one, whatever text we want. And it's going to be invoked so that everybody knows who won or what string value was won. So let me go ahead and pause this and type out the comment for that. All right, so how do we know when our game ended? Well, we can come up with some arbitrary number, like let's say seven or five. So if the player scored five points. But for our testing purposes, let's just make it like the first person to score one point wins. So let's make a method called check for winner. All right, here you can see that we created our end game method and we're invoking the end game and then we're also going to invoke the winning player. But how do we know who the winning player is? Well, that's why we're calling this end game from this check for winner. Now notice that it's gray here, so we haven't actually called check for winner. But within this, we have end game, if it's score player one, and remember the score are these two integer values up here that we created. So if this score reaches one, and again, if you want to make it five, you just change this to five. And if the, the score for player one reaches one, we're going to pass in to our end game function here, the winning player, which is player one. And then if we don't pass, if we doesn't make it here, we're going to pass in player two. We're going to invoke that for the listener. So you'll see in a second how we wire all this up to a UI. So, well, where do we do the check for winner? Like when when is that called? Let's take a look at the method that we would use to call this. All right, so here's where we're calling check for winner, but let's start from the beginning and see how we get here. So down below this, I kind of just put this above it so that you could see it sort of calling it a logical order. But here's our end game function. And here we have string winning player for end game, and then we're passing in the winning player here, right? But we want to create a method, and notice again, it's grayed out. We need to create another method to call this one. But this is a method to handle scoring, and it's a pretty easy to understand script. So just kind of bear with me for a second. And it updates the score of the player who made the point. So in this method or function, I'm going to call them methods essentially from now on, we're passing in letters, a, a word, string of scoring player. And if you remember, inside a score, um, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in whoever made the point. So if it's player one or player two. Now, remember down here, we have end game player one, and then we have end game player two. Well, if player one is passed in here, we're going to add one point to this integer here. Now, this is shorthand notation for something like this. So by putting a plus plus, all we're saying here is scoring player one equals scoring player one plus one point. So that's all this plus plus does. And then if the other person that scored a point is player two, we're just going to increment that one by one. Now then we're going to notify all the listeners. Remember, events and listeners are, there's a bunch of different events, and we're just kind of decoupling our code. We're trying to make it clean where everything is listening for certain events to happen. So once our score changes, we're going to invoke or we're going to send out a message to all the listeners or notify our listeners that score the current score of player one and two. So this could be zero, one, one, zero, whatever, because remember we're only going up to one. And then we're going to call this function down here, which is check for winner. And remember, all check for winner does is it checks if it's greater than or equal to one. If score one is, and then we're going to send end game player one or end game player two. So let's take a look at where we can uh, invoke this score method. Well, there's a couple of places we could put this, but Probably the smartest place, I think, for now, is the ball controller. The reason for this is inside of this script, the ball controller, we're checking essentially if our ball hits the wall, right? So uh, let's find the, uh, here we go. If collision.gameObject compare tag equals B wall, right? So here we, we have this, our collision here. Uh, we're going to reset the ball's position. But maybe what we should be doing here is checking that if our um, the checking if we're doing P1 player one's wall or player two's wall. 
So let's go back in and let's change that. And then we're going to actually change this on collision enter function to send a point or a score or let it know who's scoring, um, whether it's one or two. So let's pause this and let's go and add another tag. All right, here we are back in Unity. Let's select this wall. Now, if player one, which is this paddle, hits this wall, we want to be able to identify that player one scored, right? So here we have B wall, and we can click on add tag to bring this back in. Now, I can actually go in and just delete this by hitting this minus here. Oh, it's being used. All right, so let's go ahead and remove this tag to untagged, and let's go to add tag, and let's subtract this one. So I'm going to name, uh, let's see, what kind of good name should we do here? Um, we can do, well, let's just do P2 wall. And then let's save this. I'm going to copy this. And then let's name this one P1 wall. Let's save this. So this is player two's wall. So let's mark this as P2 wall. And then let's mark this as P1 wall. All right, so if player one's wall gets hit, player two scores. If player two's wall gets hit, player one scores. So let's make sure these are both tagged. And looks good. All right, let's save this, and then let's go back into our code and write this out. Okay, before I pause the video and type it out, I'm going to be essentially editing this area here. So I'll be removing the if here, and then I'll be changing this to P2 or P1 wall. And then I'm going to do an else if off of this one. And we're going to be copying this. And let's, uh, either way, we're going to reset the ball position. And actually, we could probably reset the ball position in the other script too, but we don't want to make this too complicated. All right, so we need to add a... Um, property that allow us to access the game manager. So let me go ahead and pause the video and add that to the top here. All right, so I added this here and I also um, placed the game manager here on the side so you can kind of see the code in action. So this game manager here, it's this public game manager and we made it of type game manager, this variable, and that's referencing the game manager set this in the inspector. So I kind of left that on there for you guys to put that in. Now. The thing is, by having this public here, and we're going to have to drag this game manager into this game, into this ball controller here. But the thing is, we can now access all of these, these different properties and methods and stuff. In specific, uh, in particular, we want to access the score here so that I can call the score and it's taking in a string, letting the uh, game manager know who scored. So let's go ahead and use this game manager. So I'm just double clicking that, copying it. And let's go all the way down here where we have our if we hit P1 wall or if we hit P2. Now, if uh, we're going to do game manager dot score. Now remember, P1's wall is right behind player one. So if player one hit the wall, that means that player two scored. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this exactly how it looks here and paste it in here. Uh, you're gonna have to look up how to, I know shift enter and writer, you're gonna have to check in Visual Studio how you can make them next to each other. You can also just kind of like undock it and then put it on the side of the screen. And then I'm gonna copy this exact same code here. And if we hit P1's wall, that means, um, oh, actually it should be the other way around. P1's wall, yeah, player two scored. If we hit P2, sorry, I got a little confused because I didn't update that. Now we have player one. And that's how we know who scored. So this is actually calling game manager score. It's passing in who the string. Remember, it's just a word. That's all. Nothing to be scared of. And then in here, we add one to uh, player one or player two, depending on who scored. Okay, so the last thing we want to do to end this video is we need to let, um, essentially let the we don't have a UI yet, so we're going to make a UI in the next video, but we just need to do something to post when somebody won, right? So here's, if score is greater than one, end game, end game here. Uh, let's see. 
Actually, let's delete this update function in here. All right, so, okay, what we'll do is we'll just put it in, let's see. Once we collide, we can just say print. And we'll say player, which player is this? Play one wall, player two one. And we'll copy this here. And we'll paste this here as player one one. All right, let's uh, jump back into Unity. And remember that we made that public game manager object here. So don't forget to drag your game manager in here, just like that. Now when I press play, you can see I'll move my paddle down, boom. You can see player two one. Now if I move this down here, let's press play, player one one. And it's resetting the position back to the center there. Um, I really think I would have preferred to have it random. I'm going to try to figure out why, what I can do to make that a little random. It should have just moved it, but it could be something in my logic. Um, but that's it for this one. And the next one, it will pretty much, the next video will be the end of the game where we'll, we'll build a UI for this.